get it started, guys. Thank yes. you, everyone, for being on the call. I know you could be somewhere else, but you chose to be here. I appreciate you. This is the Realtor Mastermind with three R's. I'm Steven Diaz, a.k.a. the Rapping Realtor, right? And thank you so much for being here. Our special guest today, I've been a big fan of uh, for years now. Her content is amazing. Inspired me on a lot of my content, right? And recently, um, I got to share a stage with her um, in San Diego. She killed it. She brought the heat. She brought the energy. And I was like, I need to bring her to the community to drop some gems. And thank goodness she said yes. So she's here today. Let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about Miss Taya DiCarlo. Taya DiCarlo is a Los Angeles real estate advisor, single mom of two young boys, and a social media influencer specializing in organic video marketing that turns followers into clients. With over 210 million in sales and top 1.5 national ranking, Taya blends relatable charm with proven expertise. While real estate remains her main career, Taya is passionate about sharing how she has thrived in an ever-changing social media landscape and fluctuating housing market, all while overcoming personal adversity. Through her speeches and over 100,000 followers online, Tay empowers realtors to embrace authenticity, conquer imposter syndrome, and build genuine connections to navigate whatever life throws their way. I really love that she likes to turn, you know, social media influence and followers into clients, right? Because at the end of the day, a bunch of followers is worthless if you're not turning them into clients, right? So with all that said, I want everybody to blow up the chat. Thank Miss. Taya DiCarlo for being our special guest, and I'm going to hand it over to Taya. Let's go. Let's go. Glad I have makeup on. My face would be red right now because <laughs> like, what an amazing welcome. Thanks, you guys, so much for having me. Um, no, Stephen, I've been a very big fan of yours. Like, I, I will admit, when we were in San Diego, I fangirled out just a little bit. <laughs> Texting some of my friends, I'm like, I met the rapping realtor. Like no, not to be imitated or duplicated. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you for having me. Um, and Leo, thank you so much for your kind words as well. Um, it's nice to see you again. And um, if you guys want to drop in the chat, I, I, there's so many people on this call. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you who know me or you've seen me talk before, um, I, I, tend to curse a little bit. So if you're offended, I apologize in advance. Um, I've got a little bit of a potty mouth. I have two boys that are eight and 10. And um, and I'm just one of those parents that will drop F-bombs in front of my kids. I'm like, we're preparing for the real world, okay? Um, and I tell them, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Um, but anyways, I'm really happy to be here. And for the most part, I really was intrigued by being on this call because so many of us, and feel free to drop in the chat if you can relate, are struggling financially this year. Am I right? Um, you know, sales, I think, are down about 30% across the country. Is that right, Leo? That is and correct. Yeah. 35 years, my friend, just to give you context, right? In 35 years, we haven't had this little amount of transactions in 35 years. Yeah. So that that means... You know, for those of us who were riding high, I mean, in 2021, as an individual agent, I had closed over 52 million in sales. You know, my bank account was the biggest it's ever been. I was still married at the time. And so just for a little bit of context, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a California native. I've lived in L.A. for almost 20 years. Um, and I, I first got started with my social media back in, gosh, 2015. 2015 was when I really started doing video for uh, for my real estate business. And with those videos, no one was watching. Facebook was new. Like nobody was even really using uh, Trulia and Zillow and all that. So I was at the very beginning of my career. I had my first child at in 2014. So I've been doing this for 
quite some time. And when Stephen had said, I've overcome some adversity, you know, I don't want to get in the weeds on that. And, but I do, what I do want to acknowledge is that everybody on this call, and right now there's 73 people on this call. And I know that I can say with all certainty, there's at least one person on this call who has dealt with some sort of serious illness maybe has dealt with addiction, maybe has lost a loved one, maybe um, has a child that is struggling, or maybe is going through a divorce, whatever your adversity is, there is, this is not a pissing match <laughs> to say that someone's adversity is worse than the other, because that takes away from what you're going through when you're like, yeah, 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 people have it worse, but you're the one who has to live your life. And so when you're navigating a tough market that we are in, and this is a tough market, listings are sitting and you're bleeding cash as a listing agent, even if you're doing all the right things and you're, you're navigating adversity. That's why I was so intrigued to come on this call when Steven was like, Hey, what would, what would you talk about? And right away I was like, well, look, I've made fucking budget cuts. I don't know about you but I've had to be smart. I want to have a profitable business. So as much as it pained me to be a veteran agent who's been in the business for, you know, like 13 years, I had to lay off my assistant. I laid off my marketing coordinator. I dismantled my team just for the time being. I'm running a lean, mean business right now because I want to be profitable and be savvy going into the new year, which also means that my videos are now being shot by yours truly. Like I still am doing my in-studio stuff, but for the most part, I'm doing handheld, you know, video. And I want people to drop in the chat what questions you may have. And Leo and Steve, I want you guys to kind of tell me where you want this to go because I'm the type of person that could talk for an hour <laughs> just all on my own. But what, what I always hear from people is how do you come up with your content? Like, what are you doing to edit? And they have all these questions, but at the end of the day, when you need to have organic video, you need to be able to come up with these ideas on your own. And lately that's what I've been doing. And I've been seeing direct results, if not, you know, more um, conversion and more engagement from videos I'm doing on my own than I had been in the studio. Wow. So. Organic, organic is powerful. 100%, my friend, organic is super powerful. And Let's just like, you know, obviously we hear the the huge numbers, right? And and obviously you've had a definitely an undertaking to get where you're at. Uh, but let's just start like building the foundation of how you've created this, this uh, your, your social media presence. Like what would you recommend to somebody that's just getting started, right? Like I'm like, I really want to do this. I want to build my personal brand. I want to duplicate, you know, what Taya has done. Let's start from there. I would say, number one, don't compare your chapter one to my chapter 13, right? Mm. Like if I've been doing this for as long as I have, it's unrealistic to say, okay, I'm starting and I want to be exactly where she's at. I have gotten where I, I'm at right now because I have dared to fail. I actually, I would love to start over and have an account with zero followers because there's no fucking pressure. I can be whoever I want. Cause nobody's watching right in the beginning of my career. It was like, I was making videos and I knew people were talking shit, like the old balls at the office that are like, Oh, that's cute. Her cute little videos. How does that equate to money in my bank account? I'm like, yeah, dinosaur. You'll see. You will. I will show you. And now they're using my videos as an example in their office meetings at another firm. And I'm like, cool. Um, but I would say number one is before you do anything, you need to know what your brand is. Who are you? And, and I actually, I worked with, um, you know, I, I do consulting for people, not just realtors, but like people who own their own business. I met with a woman who is a novelist, right? She's publishing um, a, a novel. It's like a, a thriller. And I was like, before, you know, your, your agent wants you to create content, you need to know who you're talking to. You're not talking to everybody, right? So step one is, who are you? And that can be something as simple as, what colors do people think of when they think of you? Like for me, it's bright, bold, in your face, like exaggerated, go big or go home, like bright green, bright blue, pinks, yellows, that sort of thing. And I know that sounds really, uh, you know, remedial, but that is, it's true because maybe you're the type that is more of a, like, I really like simple black and white, or, you know, your brand is you. Your brand is not your brokerage. Your brand is not a logo. Your brand is you. So once you know what your personality is and what your vibe is, your vibe attracts your tribe. 
You don't need to do business with everybody. You don't have the fucking bandwidth to do business with everybody. So let's start with the people who are naturally attracted to you, right? And the people who are attracted to you, they see themselves in you, right? It's like, oh, I like, I like Steve. Like Steven is like this cool guy. It's like, I can imagine myself doing a deal with him. He's got a personality and you can tell he's business savvy and he's attracting clients who respect him. He's building trust out the gate. So number one, figure out who you are, what your brand is. Number two, who is your perfect client? How old are they? Where do they live? How much money do they make? What are their hobbies? What do they like to do in their free time? And then only talk to those people. I always compare it whenever I'm on stage and we're talking about this subject because oh, so many people want to skip this step. They're like, I just want someone to do it for me. I just want to hire someone and I just need to sell real estate, blah, blah, blah. No, we're talking about branding and marketing. We need to know exactly who your avatar is. Like my perfect avatar is someone within like a 10 year range of me, right? They're probably, they probably have kids or they're going to have kids. They live in the South Bay of Los Angeles, right? Where the entry level price point here is almost like 2 million. So it's like, okay, ask chat GPT. What jobs do people have that make fucking, <laughs> they can afford a $2 million house. And then you want to market to those people. You know what I mean? Do your clients hang out at a country club? Like that's why I picked up tennis. You guys, I didn't play tennis four years ago, but I can kick ass now because the people who play tennis in the middle of the day, they can buy a $2 million house. <laughs> You know what I mean? So if you, if you even, if you compare this to like a stand-up comedian, a stand-up comedian who's trying to make the entire room laugh, nobody's going to laugh. But if a stand-up comedian is like, I'm going to tell jokes that I think are funny. He's going to piss off some people or she may alienate herself from some people. But guess what? The people who are into that kind of humor are like, hey, that was great. You know? And fine, let the people who want to hate on you, let them hate on you. You can't please everybody. So that's what I would say is step one, figure out who you are, who you're talking to. And then step two, um, you need to just get into action. Love that. Love that. And hey, a great, you know, I love what you're sharing. And what was the moment for you when it was like a breakthrough moment that you really got that, hey, this is this is really a, a uh, uh, something that I'm going to do for my business that's going to work, right? Where was that breakthrough moment for you that you had like, aha, uh -huh, like I'm yeah. going to go all in on this? Yeah. Um. So I will admit that I dabbled for a long time. Mm. And I think it should be said that social media is not the magic pill, right? It's not a substitution. It's kind of like if you're getting into shape and you're working out at the gym, you still have to lift weights. You still have to throw in some cardio. You still have to eat right. But taking your supplements, that's going to elevate the entire experience, right? And going to get you results faster. Social media is a power supplement, but it's not a substitution for cold calling, for door knocking, for open houses, for picking up the phone and calling your clients. You still have to do those things. But so for me, I was doing all the old school shit sending out postcards. I had a landing page. I was running digital ads. And I was like, like I was getting a little bit of results, but I'm like, this fucking sucks. Like, I feel like I'm a hamster on a wheel. I'm like, do you want to sell your house? Do you want to sell your house? Do you know anybody who wants to fucking buy some real estate? Like, oh my God. I like, I wanted to pull my hair out. And mind you, I was like door knocking pregnant. You know what I mean? I was like, this sucks. Like all the women on here, you don't get, you don't get maternity leave when you're a realtor. You got to like fill your pipeline. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, it was like, I, I had this epiphany moment where I was like, I was so angry that a couple friends of mine sold and bought without me. And I was like, that mm. is brutal. Right. And everybody on this call has had that happen. I was like, if people knew that I actually am good at this, there would be no question. If people could see me doing this, then they would trust me and they would believe me and they would call me and they would refer me to their friends. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to start videotaping myself at open houses. I'm going to start videotaping myself about doing this. And I'm just going to start showing people, not telling people, but showing people. And when I was dabbling, it kind of worked, but it wasn't until uh, it was like February of 2020. 
Mm. before the world shut down. I was, I'm going to start doing this methodically. I'm going to be intentional about it. And I'm going to do Taya's two cents. And it wasn't until I got, I went to office Depot and I'll never forget. I got these massive post-its. They're like poster post-its. And I started writing down the branding stuff that we talked about the colors and the hobbies and the money and the this and the avatar for the client. And then I was like, okay, well, my two cents on that. And I was like, okay, that's it. Taya's two cents. I'm going to be the knowledge broker and I'm going to start educating people about these questions that I get asked all the fucking time. Like so many people asking me the same questions over and over again. I go, that should be a video and that should live on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or whatever. So I started content banking and I started filming you know, once at at first it was like once a week and then it was once a month. And then I started consistently posting videos every single week in combination with a little sprinkle of proof of success. I wasn't doing that before. I had this negative self-talk that like I was being conceited or boastful or braggadocious if I was just listed, just sold. Cause I was getting pissed off seeing this just listed, just sold. Like (laughs) you're a dork, like shut up. I don't want to see your just listed, just sold. But for me, all of a sudden, this epiphany was like, okay, well, the only way they're going to trust me is if I show them I've done it. So I have to Mm. split in. So instead of just listed, just sold, I was doing a storytelling, right? Here's where things went well. And here's where things didn't go well. And the struggle was real with this sale. And it was more of storytelling proof of success with a knowledge broker. And then behind the scenes of like my life. And I started doing that consistently every week. And then- By the time, I think it was like May of 2020, I'm not kidding you. I was getting, my phone was blowing up and I was getting agent referrals and I was getting past client referrals. And I was getting random phone calls from like, like friends of friends who were like, oh, well, I saw that you did this. And well, you know, yeah, you've been doing your Taya's two cents. I'm like, do these people, like I had imposter syndrome because I was like, do they know like I, I just started this? I just started this, but I was doing it so consistently that they were like, well, you've been doing it forever. So, and then- How long did that take, by the way? How long did that take from that to like, you started getting blown up? What was the time gap? Four months, four months, but it was, but I was being like psycho with it. (laughs) And, And during that time, some friends of friends were talking mad shit about me. Mm. Like, oh, she is so annoying. God, with her stupid videos and, oh my God, she's so into herself and blah, blah, blah. And, and I will admit it hurt, right? It hurt. But I also was like, but look at my bank account. (laughs) Like, fuck you guys. I I'm laughing all the way to the bank. And I, and, and I just had this, this boost where I was like, you know what? Fine. Let them, they're going to talk, let them talk. And mind you, I still have those moments of insecurity, especially with like the ego blow of my marriage falling apart and going through a three year long divorce. Like it's been hard. It's been really, really Mm. hard And with the market change and all this stuff, but like complaining about it and being in a fetal position on the floor, crying about it, which is sometimes necessary. You, at some point you got to stand up and go, I, I can't have this pity party much longer. Like Mm. I have to get into action. People are going to talk. Like I need to find my confidence again. It it never left. It's there. It's just covered up by all these layers. And the best way to break that is to just get into action Um, and, and, and learn from my own story. I'm taking my own advice right now is like the moment you start getting consistent with it, give it four months, Mm. four months. And you, you will not recognize yourself in a good way. And you won't recognize your social media. And yeah, it's yeah. hard work. I think a lot of people they when they dive into social media and they might go hard for like a week and they're like, it's not working. Right. But it took me like a year. Yeah. You know, and you said four months and it's hard work. Right. I know last night um, I edited a video for like an hour. So I, I do have a question for you, um, just talking about how hard it is and, and it's difficult, it's not easy. You're a single mom of two, and now you said you fired, you, you made your team smaller. So like, what is your schedule like? How do you fit that in? Like how many hours a week does it take you? I mean, it's not easy, right? 
Fuck. No, <laughs> it's not. No. Oh my God. Um, okay. I will tell you this. The blessing is that having 50, 50 custody right now is like, I think that people need to understand that even if you're married, even if you don't have kids, um, time blocking is something that for me having ADHD is, is triggering for me. The word time block, the word organize the word. I know this sounds like for the OCD people, they're like, how is this woman successful? If she's like turned off by the word organizing LM yeah, facts. Exactly. It's like you, you have to, how do I put this? It's, it's hard. It's not easy. And so you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? And you have to, you have to calculate in rest because mm. if there's one thing I've learned leading up to this point. It's that I have burned myself out in the past where I've been go, 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 go. And then all of a sudden I built something that was unsustainable, right? Whereas if you're burnt out, then you take your foot off the gas completely. And now your pipeline's empty. And now you're playing catch up, right? So A, it's hard. B, you have to be intentional. My schedule changes all the time, which makes it extremely challenging to find a routine because I'm on a two, two, three schedule with my ex. So sometimes the kids are with me, sometimes they're not. And it's like, when they're with me, I want to be with them, right? I want dinner to be on the table when they come home. I don't want, I was raised by a single mom and my mom was barely around. And I love my mom, but like, she was always stressed out and always rushing. And I don't want to give that to my kids. So what I do, and this is a new hack that my therapist um, taught me and I'll pay it forward to you. This will be one of my, my gems for you guys, <laughs> whether you have ADHD or not, I want you to do this because there's scientific research behind this. Okay. So let's say you should never give yourself too long of a list in one day, number one, because you're setting yourself up for failure. Pick six things that absolutely need to get done, or you at least need to like put a dent in them. Okay. Six things, write them down on a piece of paper, one through six. And then everybody's got board games, right? You have some dice, grab a die and you're going to roll the die and whatever it lands on, you're going to set a timer for 15 minutes and you're going to put your fucking phone away. You're not going to check your email. You're not going to do anything. You're going to set a timer for 15 minutes and you're going to go head down blinders on, and you're going to only hyper-focus on that one thing for 15 minutes. And what's going to happen is the timer is going to go off and you're going to go, oh, but I want to do more. It, but here's the, here's the trick. If you start making baby steps and you start making little dents in multiple things, it's the little things that will compound and will help you gain some momentum. And then you'll start seeing results in multiple areas. Instead of letting something pile up and you're like, God, I haven't prospected in forever. And now I got to prospect for four hours. No, just pick up the phone and prospect for 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Even if you have two or three phone calls or leave four voicemails, that's better than nothing. And it's like, I, I'm going to use the workout reference again. But mm -hmm. you can't go to the gym seven days in a row and expect to be 20 pounds lighter. It doesn't work that way. You have to go to the gym for like 45 minutes every day for three months. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then you might see some results. But but the key here is to be befriend your inner critic. Your inner critic is going to say to you, oh my God, this is too much. Like, I can't do this. You're setting yourself up for failure. Who are you to think that you could even do video? Who are you to think that you could even be da, 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 da. Men and women have this inner voice. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you were to actually view your inner critic as actually not critiquing you, but actually shouting from the rooftops that they've been ignored 
Like imagine my inner voice is going, bitch, I've been trying to tell you, make your fucking phone calls. You lazy piece of shit. You've been scrolling Instagram when you could have been calling people. You've been, you know, making, you've been like cleaning your house when you, you could have been emailing people. You've been doing this when you could have been that. And my inner, my inner voice is like screaming at me. Why? And why do I perceive her as this annoying, critical bitch? Because she's been ignored. But if I actually befriend her and see her as like the track coach that is encouraging me and inspiring me and pushing me and being like, you know, you can do it. Stop being lazy. Like stop rewarding yourself with like letting yourself off the hook. That's not a reward. You should reward yourself once you've actually accomplished something. And that's the key with playing this game and tricking your brain with rolling the dice. It's like, okay, I'm just going to see what happens. 15 minutes. And then when that 15 minutes is up, then you could sit there and scroll or make yourself a snack or whatever you're going to do, but just give yourself like, you got a chunk. You got to like, you take baby steps brick by brick. And then once you do that, you're not going to be as overwhelmed. And that's for me with my schedule, I give myself grace today. It was something as simple as just like lining it up. I had this call at 10. I knew I was going to take the dog to daycare, drop the kids off. And then I got an appraisal right after this. So I knew I needed to be dressed. And it's like, I have my whole day mapped out and I don't add on too many things. Cause when I do, it's like spinning the plates, like everything falls. Mm. So good. So, so good. Really well said. It's a, uh, you know, what you were saying, it was Ryan, it reminded me of like the hardest part of getting to the gym is actually getting to the gym, right? Like getting that, that first little step, that first little nugget. And, you know, I would say, what is your creative process nowadays to, do you like have a time block where you just execute all your videos in one week? Do you do it daily? Do you do it sporadically? Like share a little bit about like that creative process for you. Yeah. And then specifically, you know, you're saying you're doing obviously a lot of organic stuff. So it's on your phone. So share some apps that you're using. Like, how are you putting this whole thing together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love being creative, first of all. Um, so I think that it starts there. Like if you don't love it, you got to ask yourself why you don't love it. Right. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Steven can relate to this. It's like, you don't know when the inspiration is going to come. It could come when you're in the bathroom. It could come when you're driving. You know what I mean? And it's like, for me, I have on my phone, I have a note section where sometimes I'm driving and I hear a song and I'm like, God, that'd be so good. Like, oh my God, this song is, is making me think of, you know, how far I've come in my career. This song makes me think of a client or whatever. And then I write down the song in my note section on my phone that I have like video ideas for fall, you know, 2024. And it literally looks like Rain Man shit. Like if you were to go in my notes, actually, like, what is she talking about? It'll be like, I had in here, like, you know, uh, adore you by Prince. I was like, what? what was I think? What? And then I play the song and I'm like, Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking. And that's what this idea was. So number one is have a place for you to log the inspiration when it comes, because you're not going to be able to control it. If I were to sit down and be creative, that is the most stifling thing you can do to an artist. And I don't care what any of you say, you're all artists. We're humans. Humans are artistic, right? So have a place to log it. Um, and anytime you get an idea, like when I'm, I like to consume social media, right? And I like to consume social media that's not about real estate. And then I make it real estate, right? Because I, I like to be a trendsetter. Sometimes I'm inspired by what's trending in real estate. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can try that. But most of the times I'm a contrarian and I'm like, well, if everyone's doing that, I don't want to do that. I want to do something that's like, shock factor or is I want to be the one starting a new trend. Um, but that's my own issue. <laughs> so I DM myself, I DM myself, um, videos that inspire me. Um, I also save, uh, I create little collections on Instagram. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, it's like, if you go on your Instagram right now, um, this is honestly like one of the most useful things that I do. And it's, it's very simple, but you click on the bottom right-hand corner where your little profile picture is, right? Right there. 
And then in the upper right hand corner, you've got like the, the lines you click on there. And then from there, it'll say saved. And when you click on saved, like for me, I have everything from photography tips, personal growth, uh, trending audio that I like, right? Um, divorce stuff. These are all private, by the way. Um, you know, these are all things, uh, Instagram inspo. So I follow a lot of accounts that talk about hacks and algorithm stuff, and I save it there. Um, and I, and I have a Taya's two cents, right? If there's a news article, I save it. So then that way, when it comes time to content bank, and I like to content bank once a month where I have a day mm. that I go there and into the studio or I film at home or whatever. And the best hack, you guys write it down, go into chat GPT and tell chat GPT, Hey, um, I have all these ideas that I really want to make into short videos. If I give you all these ideas, will you help me outline, you know, these videos into 15 to 30 seconds long? And they're like, okay, beep, bop, boop. And then it's not going to be perfect, but it's at least going to organize your thoughts. And it's hundred percent worth it to do the $20 a month for paid chat GPT. It has been like having a virtual assistant. Um, and it helps me, um, you know, get into action and just get it done. So I told Steve this on the phone. This is a perfect example of zero budget, you guys, zero budget. And you can totally copy me if you want. I don't care. Um, I'm, I'm one of those that's like flattered if you copy me. Um, <laughs> so market, market updates, right? Everybody hates them. I think they're annoying as hell. But- I saw that a lot of people are using many chat and I know Steve used it for the call today, right? Comment, you know, zoom and you'll get the link and it's like fucking genius. The key is you want to combine many chat with flow desk. So that way you can collect people's emails. And if you don't know how to do that, Google it. Um, but this video that I recently did, I was like, I need to do a market update. So I did the market update via video format. And my escrow office that I use said they have Altos research where they can do a full detailed report on whatever zip code, blah, blah, blah. So I saved those as PDFs and I had this video. Housing market, if you're only following the national news, you are missing the full big picture right. because every neighborhood is very nuanced. Even here in the South Bay, when we're talking Manhattan Beach to Redondo Beach, you're going to find that. Okay, so I used CapCut. Write it down if you don't have it. CapCut's fantastic because it's like easy to edit and you can get, um, you know, background music that's not copyrighted. And so I just put my video in there and it has the fancy captions in CapCut. It does it for you. And then in the video, I just said comment report if you want to see these reports for yourself. And I used ChatGPT for my caption. And I was like, help me write a caption about beep, bop, boop. There it is. Right. And then I signed up for a many chat and, and I have to be honest, when I put it out there, I was like, oh my God, what if nobody comments report? <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to like call my mom and be like, mom, I just posted this video. I need you to comment report. Okay. And I'm not kidding you. I, the video has, I think the stats on it are actually kind of impressive for just like a low budget shot on a whim in my office. Which, by the way, I ended up shooting it like four times because I thought I sounded like a cheesy right. newscaster and I was like really being hard on myself about it. <laughs> so just so you know, everybody has this like inner dialogue that is like sometimes unhealthy, um, but the insights are interesting. Okay. It's been viewed 9,600 times and I just posted it November 12th. Okay. It's been viewed 9,600 times. It has 306 likes. 112 comments. It's been privately DM'd 33 times and it's been saved 80 times. And just yesterday, I got a phone call from an agent in Texas who's like, Hey, Taya, um, I know this is so random. You showed up on my Instagram the other day. I'm a compass agent in Texas. And it's so weird. My client's relocating to Redondo Beach. And in your market video, you mentioned Redondo Beach. Like, do you, you cover that area, right? And here I am going, no fucking way. Like she's, 
like my fucking free low budget video reached an agent in Texas within seven days to call me and refer me a $2 million buyer. What? Like if I can just make more of these videos, I mean, and then you combine that with like your proof of success videos and your knowledge broker videos. When you go in the studio, when I, when my budget's back, watch out, like it's game on. So this is a perfect example of there is no excuse to not be making content. Somebody asked if I use a teleprompter. I do not. If, if you're uncomfortable on camera, that's totally something that you can do. However, I caution you because reading a teleprompter makes you sound insecure and like you're reading and people don't like to be talked at. They like to be talked to. So a hack for that is prompt yourself with questions that are going to instigate an organic response. So for example, the market report, um, you could have a have like a friend in the room say to you, well, the national news says blah, 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 blah about housing. And then you can organically be like, yeah, but that doesn't apply to our area. Right. And then you, and then you could just start talking normally, like be a normal human being and edit it, cut out your ums, and just chop it down. Or if you're really insecure on camera, you can go film around your neighborhood and go back and do a voiceover. And it has the same effect. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. I love it. I love it. A lot of gems. A lot of gems. A lot of gems. And that's the guys, let's go ahead and start posting uh questions. Want to see more questions here in the chat for Kaya. Um it's really good stuff. And so what, what it sounds like you're using CapCut, obviously you're using Instagram. What other platforms or apps do you in, recommend in addition to those uh, couple of ones that you just mentioned and captions yeah. I think you mentioned as well? Yeah, so uh, CapCut has those really awesome captions. The pro version has the animated captions where they throw in emojis or highlighted words and stuff like that. You can speed up, slow down. Um, refer I mean, there's so many cool uh, features that CapCut has. Um, I also love Canva, like Canva is a great tool as well. And again, the paid versions are not that much money. Um, and it, you know, they're easy to learn. Like you're going to get in there at first and be like, oh my God, I want to pay someone to do this, but watch a couple of YouTube videos. And I promise you, like, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention as far as the tools go, like Instagram has its own, you know, captions as well. Um, but I would say that organically uploading it directly and not using one of those platforms that uploads it for you is going to give mm. you better results. Um, never buy your followers, never buy engagement. It's going to kill your engagement. Um, Instagram will punish you for that. It really, really will. Um, and so I would say when people have asked me in the past, what do you mean that you've gotten clients from Instagram? What does that even mean? Um, and they confuse followers for like leads and it doesn't work that way in my, for, from my experience. Um, I have found that I will have like loyal likers who are like voyeurs. They're, they're on my page. They're there. They, they see my stories without fail. And I'm like, this person is always there. <laughs> um, <laughs> But you have to remember that when people are watching you, they are learning something. If you're providing value and not just bragging and not just posting to post, they actually are curious and they enjoy following along, right? And so you are subliminally building trust with people that you don't even know you're engaged with yet, right? So- just remember that, that these are not leads. These are not strangers. These are, this is social media for me is like prospecting my sphere of influence, right? So if there are some mom friends um, or past clients or whatever, I always make sure that A, they're in my CRM and B, that I follow them on Instagram and I add them to my close friends list. So that's a hack that everyone should absolutely do. Anyone you've done business with, if they're on social, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, make sure that you are connected with them 
because the algorithm will feed anything that like they're into right now. If all of a sudden you're posting something that's relevant to them, the algorithm will try and like be a matchmaker. And a perfect success story of that, that I'll share with you guys, that is a perfect example of like how a follower turned into a client. Um, it started with an in-person engagement, right? I went to one mom's night out. There were drinks served. It was a saved by the nineties theme and shocker. I go all in on a theme. Okay. So I was dressed like saved by the bell. Right. And I'm at this party and it's at a like concert venue and I meet this woman and we talk briefly. I'm talking like 15 minutes. And she was like, well, what's your number? I want to keep in touch. Lola, our kids are the same age. And I was like, oh, I, I was like, I don't have my business card on me. And it was really loud. And I was like, but I'm on Instagram. And she was okay, cool. So she starts following me. I start following her. It must have been nine months later. So it was a while. Okay. Had not seen her since. Had not seen her since. But she started seeing my Taya's Two Cents videos. Before you know it, one day I'm making mac and cheese. She DMs me. And she goes, hey, what do you think my house is worth in El Segundo? And I'm like, stirring. I'm like, does <laughs> this chick want like a CMA right now? And so I was like, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm writing her back. Fast forward to, it's the middle of the pandemic, right? Fast forward to my listing appointment. I showed up dressed and ready to go with the stupid mask on and my like CMA. And she's not even there. She FaceTimes me, remotely opens the, the lock with an electronic thing. I'm FaceTiming her. I walk through her house. I tell her what it's worth. I end up selling her house for a record price. I think it was like 2.4 million. And then she hired me to sell her husband's income property in Long Beach. It was a four unit that I got 16 offers on. Then they hired me um, for his grandmother, okay, who was like a Holocaust survivor who owned like two apartment buildings in Hawthorne. I sold them both. It was a triplex and a 16 unit. I sold both of them. And I, and then I ended up referring her to, you know, buy a property in Washington. I ended up doing almost $7 million worth of business with this follower on Instagram. And had I not been doing my Taya's two cents videos and building trust over a nine month period, that would have never happened. She knew every realtor in town and every realtor in town was so mad at them for not hiring them and hiring me. But she, and I asked her, I said, what made the difference for you? And she goes, I just felt like you really knew what you were doing because mm. I watched you do it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. People, people trust uh, what they could see, mm -hmm. you know, who they could see 100%. That's a huge gem, huge nugget. It's really good stuff. And I think there was a couple of more questions in here. I tell you, there was uh, somebody that asked, uh, I think Lee Mighty said, if you outsourced it or do you do your own edits? And then how does the close friends things work? Like, you know, how do you make sure that you get your close community? Yeah. They can see their stuff and they can see you. Um. So the first part of that question, let me see, where is it? Can you see There's that? a bunch of more now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, it was, yeah, I know. It was, do you outsource your editing or do you okay. do your own editing? Yeah. Yeah, so for my Taya's Two Cents videos in studio, I do not do that. Like I'm, I, I always tell people I'm the content creator and creative director. So I always come with my ideas because the guys who film, they don't know shit about real estate. Like I love Derek and Ricky, but I'm like, you guys don't. You know what I mean? If I trusted them to write my content, it would fall flat and it would feel basic. It would feel like, like, it would feel like chat GPT did it. <laughs> like <laughs> chat GPT only saves you time and gets you started. You have to be the one who goes in and perfects it and tweaks it and makes it you. Right. It's not like a click of a button and it's done. You still have to do some work. Um, spoiler alert. That's life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't escape hard work. Like it's going to be painful and it's going to suck, but it's going to be worth it. Um, Darn it. Shit. Um, <laughs> but, when, but when it comes to the in-studio stuff, I don't mess with that. Like I show up with my ideas. I get my hair done. I get my makeup done. I rent my clothes. I don't fuck around. I'm like, I want to come in with the ideas and I want to be honed in and focused on delivering value. And I want to outsource the rest. 
And that's what's helped me build credibility. But right now with my, my budget being tighter, right? I don't have that luxury. So I've had to humble myself and be like, okay, Taya, <laughs> you're going to have to edit it yourself. And no, I have not been outsourcing. So all the videos that you see where it looks like I'm shooting it myself, I am. And I'm editing myself and I'm picking the music myself and it's taking me a little bit more time, but it's keeping me relevant. And so I am not, when my budget is back, I'm going to outsource the in-studio stuff. But ironically, you guys, the videos that have gotten the most engagement and the most amount of views are videos that I have filmed, created, and edited myself. Really good so stuff. Really good stuff. Asked, how, how does close friends work? Close friends, um, when you go to your uh, your followers, and again, I forget how you get there on Instagram, but your close friends, like if you go to share a story, you'll have the option to send it to all of your followers or make it viewable only to your close friends. So sometimes when I want to share something about my kids, because I don't always, I share about my kids, but not all the time because my kids are at the age now where they legit will look at me and be like, I did not give you consent to post that about me. I don't like the way I look in that picture. These are my boys. And I'm like, Oh, excuse you. Okay. So I'll send it to my close friends. Cause I don't want, you know, a bunch of weirdos looking at my kids if they're like running around in their pajamas, you know what I mean? So you can identify who your close friends are. And what's great is your close friends. If you identify them, they're going to show up in your feed, especially if you have like, you know, quite a few followers, even if you have over a thousand followers, something like that, you want to make sure that your close friends are people you actually know in real life, that if you ran into them in person, they know who you are, you know who they are. And then that way your content shows up for them and Love vice that. versa. There was a uh, Martina that asked, a thank you so much for answering that question. So on average, how much time do you spend creating and editing your videos? Do, do you have a protocol for posting? Question. Yeah, um, I, I try my best to like when I have an idea. So for example, that market report one, I told myself, it's like, I am not going to spend more than an hour on this. I'm just not. If I can get it done in 30 minutes, fantastic. And so I will be intentional about it. And I'll just say, and, and again, there, I forget what the the law, like the universal law of if I tell you it's going to cost you $100 or $1,000, it's going to cost you that much. Or if I tell you you have 10 days to do it or five days to do it, it's going to take you that long. The same thing goes for when you tell yourself, I'm going to make this video and you know it's only going to take me an hour. If you give yourself all day, you will take all day doing it. So I really, I set a cap on it. I'm like, I don't have time to mess around. Like I love content creation, but the highest and best use of my time, if I'm being perfectly honest, is picking up the phone and calling past clients. That is the highest and best use of my time. Just picking up the phone, which by the way, if you don't have a full pipeline right now, the fastest and best way for you to shake that tree is to just pick up the phone and start calling everyone you've ever done a deal with and have no shame in it. Just be like, Hey, you know, Jim, it's, I know it's been five years. How are you? Like, how's it going? Yeah. The, the market's shit right now, or the market is pretty funky right now. Yeah. Have you been hearing about it in the news? Yeah. Times it's, I'm in, you know, I I'll, I'll admit it It's like with the holidays and everything, there's a little bit of a lull. So I'm utilizing this time to make a service call to you. How's the house? Like, do you need any referrals for like, I remember the roof had an issue. Like, do you need a referral for that? Or do you need a plumber? I just found out of, or, you know, how's your, per, how's your business going? Can I promote it in my newsletter or whatever? This is a service call. I'm not asking anything from you. I'm just calling to check in on you. Cause it's been a while and I'm, my business was exploding and so busy and for the last couple of years, and now it's slowed down and shame on me for not reaching out. If you start making those calls this month and in December, your January is going to be bananas. Facts. Big facts. Big facts. Miss Tay, you dropped so many gems so far. So thank you so much for dropping all these gems. Yeah. And if you had to leave everybody with one more gem, one more gem, like what would it be like your summary of everything you mentioned? And also just having an understanding, because you did mention this, like, I wish I could just restart. And if you were to restart, like maybe that's part of the gem process, right? What would you do differently? How would you uh, do things moving forward? 
I would dare to fail even bigger. Like you do not learn when you win. You just don't. You learn from falling flat on your face. The 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 gem and the the wis the gem of wisdom that you earn by falling and fucking up and losing everything, jeopardizing things, having people question you and all of that stuff, that allows time for introspection, right? Like to evaluate who you are, what you want. You're not going to take the time to do that when you're winning. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling right now, that is awesome. Because this is the time when you can take this downtime and you can pause and you can reset and you can decide exactly what you want and speak it into existence. And the, I will leave you with this. The reason why this was like some wisdom that was bestowed upon me. You have to be very careful with the words that you use when you're describing yourself and your business and what you want, because words cast spells. That's why they call it spelling. Yes. So be mindful. And the word mindful basically means like having a conversation with yourself, which sounds crazy. But if you take the time to actually speak to yourself and speak to yourself like you would if you were parenting your own child, like being firm, right? But loving and supportive, mm. like that is where you'll be able to get out of your way and get into action. Because I have learned that the only thing stopping me from dusting myself off and gaining momentum again and building back what really came crashing down for me through all this adversity mm. is that I'm the only one standing in my way, right? Like take yes. some, dust yourself off and be like, all right, this comeback's personal. 100%, 100%. I freaking love that. I freaking love that. And this, you're, what you just described, this book, is when what what to say when you talk to yourself? I'm actually just reading the oh, book right now. Oh, send that to me. Drop yeah, it so in this that. is everything you're talking about. And I, that, that was one more question I wanted to ask you. What are your like top two or three favorite books, like uh, oh. podcasts? Yeah, there, <laughs> that okay. Well, hold on now. Okay, listen. <laughs> write. You got to write this down. Yes, let's write it down. Yes. This is this is like, I am obsessed with self development, um, and personal growth. So audible. I just dropped the book, by the way, what to say when you talk to yourself. This is everything you're talking Perfect. about right now. So powerful. Okay. So I'm just going to drop these on you. You can take it for what it's worth. There's two business books for entrepreneurs by Mike Michalowicz. One is called profit first. And mm. um, the other one is called the pumpkin plan. Those never are heard of that one. Oh, the pumpkin oh. plan. So good. It's mm. about firing toxic clients that are sucking up your energy and he compares it to pumpkin farming how pumpkin farmers will actually cut off what seems to be a nice big pumpkin because it's diseased and unhealthy and it's fucking up the entire vine of healthy pumpkin. wow it i'm telling wow. you those two books right there um brianna weist she wrote um the mountain is you it's mm. a book about self-sabotage blow your socks off should be required reading. And once you read that, you're going to be like, oh my God, you're going to read all her books. Um, but yeah, I could go on and on, but those, those right there for now, um, daring greatly by Brene Brown. Um, oh my God, there's so many others. I should start a book club. Uh, <laughs> yes, let's do it. But yeah. Let's those do it. Are, but I'm telling you right now, the mountain is you was such a game changer for me. I walked around my house listening to it like this. Like I felt <laughs> So I felt so attacked. <laughs> this bitch. I like this. What? And it actually got me into action. So yeah, have fun with those. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank yeah. you so much. And everybody, let's go ahead and give a lot of love to Miss Taya for sharing so much wisdom thank today. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you, my thank friend. Thank you. Thank you, Taya, so much. Appreciate oh it. You guys, thank you. This is such a gift. And it really fills my cup to to pay things forward and to make people understand that you're not alone in your struggle um, and that everything's temporary, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, 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 yes. 100%. Thank you so much, my friend.
Thanks, Thank you guys. for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge. I know I got a ton of value. Make sure you give Taya a big follow on social media if you're not already doing that. Give her a huge shout out. Let her know what you got. It's at least one nugget. I told you guys, take at least one nugget. I think we got like 15 or 20 nuggets today. So once again, Taya, thank you so much. And for those of you that enjoyed this training, make sure you stay tuned. Next Wednesday, we have another huge guest that's coming. Stay tuned. If you guys are receiving our emails, make sure you go, you know, you, you check those out. And then also, if you guys want the replay, make sure you reach out to Steven via direct message on Instagram. He can go ahead and send you over uh, the direct message with the actual video link as well. So talk to you guys very soon. God bless each and every single so one of you. Huh? Let's take some action. Let's go. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.